Hey everybody, Matt from Eastwood Company. As you get into heavy fabrication, there's going to be a time that you're going to find yourself needing a chassis table. These are great for building your own chassis from scratch or even doing modifications or repair to a chassis where you need a really flat surface that you can also fixture to. I looked around on the web and I went to a bunch of different friends' shops to check out their chassis tables. I saw everything from the most wild all the way down to something so simple that they were basically just using jack stands. I decided to put all of those ideas together and come up with a design that would fit my needs. Most important thing was it needed to be mobile and needed to be able to adjust the height so I could get everything exactly how I wanted and really level. You can see I have the design laid out here of basically how it's going to look and we have our casters and we also have some feet that are adjustable that raise the table up up front. The material that we're using is pretty heavy and we're going to be doing a lot of welding. That's why I chose the Eastwood MIG 250 to be the workhorse for this project. Now the design is pretty simple and everything should go together pretty easily, but we're going to show you some tips and tricks along the way, so let's get started. Almost no shop floors are completely flat. We decided to build each half of the table on top of each other to take out some of the inconsistencies in the floor. We started by squaring up the first corner of the table and also checked to make sure the seam was flat and we clamped the beams together. Here's a tip. Cut yourself a small stack of sheet metal squares in a few different thicknesses to shim your table so that it is level. We first placed them under the level until we found the correct amount of shims. We then relocated them to under the appropriate corner. Once the first corner was square and level, we tack welded the seam together. After the first few tack welds, we checked to make sure the parts hadn't moved with the heat of the welds. Because we left our clamps in place, the parts were still square and we could finish tack welding around the beams. We prepared the next two beams and sanded any proud welds or weld spatter down from the first two so that we could use them for a flat base to build off of. Next, square up the other half and use the metal shims to level the beams out. Then we repeated the tack welding process and secured the last two beams together for the second half of the perimeter of the table. The two halves were set up on square box tubing to try and build off of a more uniform surface again. We then went around to the two other seams and made them square and level to the rest of the table and tack welded them together. With the perimeter frame built, we measured and marked the center of where each side of the center cross braces would sit. We then repeated the process of squaring and leveling the cross braces and tack welded them in place. With the top work surface tack welded together and ground smooth, we flipped the table over so we could weld the bottom seams.
We made the legs and overall table height fairly short compared to a normal fab table. This is because we will be building up on the table and we don't want the project we're working on to be too tall once it's on top of the table. We installed the legs so the top of them were flush with the top work surface and we welded them in place. Next, we installed heavy 3 8 plate to the bottom of the legs that the casters and feet could be attached to. With the plates installed, we welded the wheel and feet base plates to the legs. As you can see, the table rolls easily on the four center casters and is lifted up off of the wheels once you step on the feet. You can then adjust the feet with a wrench to level it out and drop the table back down by stepping on the release buttons. So there you have it. Our table is finished and we're ready to start on our first project. A job like this requires a lot of continuous heavy welding and the MiG-250 with its 60% duty cycle at 250 amps and its ability to weld up to half inch steel was more than up to the task. For more tech videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and to keep up with the latest Eastwood news, make sure you like us on Facebook and visit eastwood.com so you can do the job right.